Hello everyone, Jet English, and I'm Gregory, and I can't believe it, but it's nice weather again. I keep saying that. I can't believe we have so many wonderful sunny days. In some countries it might be not a big deal, but here in Colton, in St. Petersburg, oh, it's quite an event. Like, look at the sky. It's completely cloud cloudless. Like, check this out. No cloud, no single cloud. At least I can can see one. So, so cool, so cool. And yesterday I was in the place where I used to live when I was a kid, and it was so amazing too. It was awesome. And now I'm walking home from the gym and a nice workout. Now my muscles are growing. You see that? I hope you see that because I, I don't. Um, yeah, and I decided to have a talk with you since I have some free time. By the way, today I have an interview with a very interesting person, a teacher and educator who lives abroad. So don't miss it. Uh, probably when you, if you're watching this video, probably we already had a talk. So please go check this interview if you're interested. So oh. hopefully I won't be. I won't get hit by car. So yeah, I'm gonna choose places where I stay away from people and particularly annoying dogs, like this one. Hey guys, it's nice weather and I have something to talk about. And um, you know, it's September and it's time when people, and people, and people, when kids go to school, right? And um, when I see kids, when I see those like school rooms, when I see those decks and pen pencils and textbooks, I know I have this terrible feeling inside. It's, it's almost like a punishment for me to see those things. I know. Um, in this video, I'm going to examine this feeling, where it came from, where it comes from. Why I feel so bad about those kids? Like, look at them. They're, like they're walking in crowds from school, and they're so miserable. Like, they look miserable. Like, look at those crazy bags behind behind their backs like they're humping under weight um, I don't know I don't know let's try to figure out why I feel so bad about school about going to school mm. well let's first start with about let's start about me let's start with me Let's start with myself. Yeah, let's start with myself, my, my experience in school. Um, first of all, I was a good student all the time. Well, probably there were some periods when I didn't study well. Like maybe I had some troubles with some particular teachers. But overall, I had very good performance. Um, I was one of the best school, most subjects, one of the best, uh, this in technical subjects, like math, physics, and what else? Like chemistry? No, no, no. Chemistry was my worst subject. Um, I was a good student. You know, I did my homework, and every, each time I got a like C, or we call it like three in Russia. I, each time I got C, I, you know, I got punished. I got punished terribly. It was like a, the end of the universe, the end of the world, and my house. So I was taught from a young age, though, so you should study very well you should you should you know, try your best try the hardest to have good grades and I learned that pretty quickly and I love some subjects but some others I really hate it and it all depends on the it all depends on the teacher and the material the stuff you're doing during the class rather than on the subject itself like let's say chemistry well it might be interesting you know if you had some, if you had some you know experiments you know, stuff blowing up turning colors uh, you know, some interesting chemicals uh, that pops up from the uh, from the glass yeah, it might be interesting but it was boring it was terribly 
excruciation, excruciatingly boring. Like, and I tried my heart to figure out the chemistry, but no, I, I never, I never got this feeling that I really get it. It was awful. And other subjects like physics, math. Well, at first, my, might have been all look difficult, but when you try something, when you spend some time and you, you know, look at things carefully, you got it. Finally, you got it, and you have this, you know, the sense of achievement. Ah, oh, now I get it. Now I understand it. But it never happened with me with chemistry. Like it, it was impossible. It was like close for me. And also, I had a teacher that you know. You need to see when the teacher doesn't like the, the subject, you know, does it, like, you know, I don't care, like, you under, whether you understand or not, I just don't care, I give you the material, you know, I ask you different exercises, and that's it, just don't bother me, go away, like, you see this attitude, um, so, what is my point here, so, uh, maybe 30% of the subjects I really enjoyed and liked, but 70% were super boring. I didn't see the point of doing that stuff. You know, many of you agree with me that at school we don't see like why we should do this, why it is important, we don't have motivation really. If you don't have motivation, everything you do is, is bad. No, people don't do great things by force. We might do it, you know, to avoid punishment, to avoid embarrassment, to avoid being grounded at being grounded at like home, but that's it. They don't do great things. And I think the problem is that we did so much things that was really unnecessary, that didn't teach our anything, that didn't satisfy our feelings, that didn't you know explore our imagination, that didn't improve our a creative abilities and skills. It was so boring. I don't know how can one person study for 10 years doing all those things every single day. It's a punishment. It's a sentence. Yeah. Um, at the time, you know, you, you didn't have other things to compare. Like when a kid goes to school, like he doesn't know anything. He doesn't know what happens like around the school. You no. Know? outside in the world in, in the in the jungle like in the what's the word um, he doesn't know that and he nothing he's nothing to compare it to compare it to so he goes to school he thinks oh well, well it's okay everyone goes to school um, probably it's the right thing to do and then I go to school and I go to university blah 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 yada yada and then you go to like work but no, now, in the hindsight, looking at all of that and comparing what I can do now, what I enjoy doing now, now I see how awful it was. It was like punishment. If you now tell me do such things, wait a second. If you now tell me to do those things, I would never do it, even for money. Even if you paid me money, I wouldn't do it. And all those exercises. It's amazing. We did for free something that I wouldn't do for money right now. That's awesome. And it's not because I'm being lazy right now. I'm not lazy. I work really hard. I work long hours. I sleep very little. You know, and I even have time you now to work out. And I even use this time to record the video for you. I hope it's recording. Okay, it's recording. And I'm not lazy. I just don't do like unnecessary and stupid things um, yeah first of all I can imagine how much time is it I can imagine how much time it is to be at school it was 10 years can you imagine that 10 freaking years at school doing stuff that you don't like doing stuff that you know, nobody's gonna have any benefits from you just do your homework and it's being assessed and then it goes to the trash can. Nobody's gonna need that. Nobody's gonna use it in any way, you know? 
but probably you might have done some projects, some works that might be useful for others, even at the young age. Let me think of it. Like you could write some stories, you know, for other for others. And if you're a program, like if you like programming, you could write simple like apps so that other students later on in the future could compare their programs with yours. Or you can do like arts. I don't know. You can do you could do you could write some poems. Oh I already said that. But my point is even when you study, even if you like even if you study in the process of learning things, I hate doing something for nothing. You could even in the process of learning, you could do something something helpful for others, something useful. Um, in 10 years, it's a hell of a time. It's a lot of time for 10 years. One can become an expert in any field. 10 years. So let's say it's if you do something three hours a day for one year, it's 1,000 hours. In 10 years, it's 10,000 hours. And as they say, one can become an expert in any field when he's accomplished 10,000 hours. Not just a professional, but a pro, which is the same. But like the, the, the best in his field, the best, one of the best in his field, like the best in the country. After 10,000 hours of dedicated practice. But the problem is that at school it's not dedicated practice. It's useless practice, it's unmotivated practice, and it's something that is done by force. First of all, it's a long time. And I think this is my first my first problem uh, my first disagreement with that okay I can understand if you like have to go through some some experience for a limited amount of time like you can go to the army for example in Russia and it, it's one year you now some people go to the army it's boring yeah, it's difficult <laughs> it's one year and it's possible like, it's it's imaginable or you know you have some sickness some sort of sickness and you have to go through through the treatment and in all that six months I have to go to some pensionet whatever and have to like treat yourself there have to get treatment and after six months you get back get back to but 11 years I mean even if you even if you get to jail God forbid even if you get to jail no, accidentally. Well, everything can happen. I compare one year, two years, and ten years. Ten years is like the whole life. Okay? And it's not just it. It's not just ten years. Then we go to the university. University. And the same process repeats itself. The only difference is that now it's like six years. And again, lots of boring, tedious lessons and lectures and you now doing stupid homework and using technologies that nobody uses anymore nobody no one longer but no one uses anymore no one well I want to put longer there but I can't do it like no one uses anymore and it's the same and um, I'm not saying it's boring for everyone uh, I'm pretty sure there's some people that enjoy the process that you know, realize pretty early on or they learn by themselves or maybe they were taught by you know, their relatives or friends that they are good at something and they learn pretty early that they're good at something when they started pursuing their career from the very young age and that's awesome these I think these people are the best professionals in the area because they had so much time to improve I'm trying to develop their skills in the chosen field but it's not the case for like 95% of people 95% of lucky people really did this but it's not for everyone and yeah it's so much time I can't believe it 15 years it's 30% of your life yeah, it's like 30% of your life. It's third, one third. Okay, let's say you become a teenager. Okay, before you like, before puberty, okay, you can think of lots of things. You're like on your own. Okay, you're not 
responsible for your actions, so on and so forth. So, forth. so let's start with like, I don't know, 14 years, 15 years. And then how much do you have? 45 years in Russia. No, let's say, like, let's make it 50 years. And now you have to study for 16 years. It's one third of your life. One third of your adult life. That's terrible. Like, that's terrible. And the terrible part is that you spend 80% of this time, 90% of this time, you now hating it. So, uh, you might ask me what, what I can suggest, like what the solution. Um, of course, I'm no one know to give advice, and there are some like, big people out there who decide that. And the education system is pretty similar all around the world, so I think it's have some you no know, basis, some scientific basis. I hope so, and it's probably for good for the most people. I'm just sharing with you my opinion. Um, so what could be done? I think that for most people, maybe it's not so bad because like parents don't have time, you now taking care of their kids. They don't have time even talking to them. Like, not to mention teaching or, you know, sending them to the uh, sports schools or some other schools, sewing schools. I mean, after the school, like extra curriculum stuff. They don't have time for that. They don't have money for that. And this is a good opportunity to send their kids to school and have their time for themselves, to enjoy themselves. Um, if they don't go to school, then we we got a lot of problems. Like, can you imagine what would... Can you imagine what young boy or young girl, you now full of energy, like when their corpuscles are corpuscular, I you know. And the energy is flowing through their veins. They're full of energy, full of life full of thoughts and ideas, by the way, not always good ideas. Um, okay, could you just imagine what they would do if they had like all the free time they have? Like they would destroy this world, literally. They they would destroy, like look at this house. I mean, isn't it a piece of art? Oh, I thought it was done. But now there's some, they're repairing something. Um, so can you imagine what they would would have what they would do what they would do if they had this free time? They would destroy. They would destroy. They would burn. They would kill. They would uh, burn. They would commit terrible things. I know that. And I get it. But let's see what can be done about that. First of all, I think we should motivate things. I think if something is done and that the kid is not motivated and something is wrong. Probably you should change this object. Probably you should sh show him the way, show them the way. Probably you should, you know, give them less homework or give them more interesting stuff. I don't know. I, I don't know, but it's, it's not right. It doesn't seem right. Like, I would ask, for example, like, let's, let's say history, okay? I don't like history. I don't enjoy it. Okay, I got it that an educated person should have some idea of what work you now looked like in the past. You now what the famous like great you now rulers were in the past and blah blah blah. I got it. Like what the events happen, uh, what the wars happen. Okay, we should remember that. Yeah, it's important. But if I'm not interested, if I hate this subject. I think one like book would be enough if it'd be an interesting book. Like one book would be enough if they gave me this book, and it was, it would be like, a, if it were a, a colorful book with lots of pictures and maybe with some videos. Like you could go to the websites and watch the videos. Like maybe I would enjoy it. I would read it, and then if I you now were interested in some particular topics. I would go further and explore those things as well. But if I don't like this, then, then okay. Okay, that, that, that's it. History is done for me. Okay? I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to know about it. This is not my thing. 
Um, I'm not going to remember that. Like, for example, I studied for 10 years, or let's say for 7 years, I studied history at school, and I did every single homework. Okay, not to lie, maybe like 80% of the time I was ready. And I read everything that was, that was given. But ask me what I remember right now. Well, there was like Alexander Makedonsky, like there was World War One, there was World War Two. This is like the general history. Um, as for Russian history, uh, there was like revolution, 19, 1919, and also there was like the World War Two. And, and I remember about our city there was like the blockage. And um, in 1991, I don't even remember, in 1992 or 1921, the USSR broke down. Like, that's all that I remember from the huge, from the sheer amount of information from like maybe 10 books, maybe 15 books on history that I learned in school. That's all that I remember. Now, what's the point? Because if you don't, if you don't repeat the information, the same goes for English languages it's even more important for languages so if you don't repeat stuff you forget it if you don't need stuff you forget it if you don't use it you lose it if you don't use it you lose it see my point if you're not interested in history if you don't enjoy it the only thing you can do is to read one book and then throw it away and then forget it and not only that no the worst part is that not only and not only do you forget it, but you have this hate for the rest of your life. Now you hate it, you have these negative feelings, you have this negative attitude. It's extremely hard to eliminate, like, to get rid of. So if, if, you don't know, if kids hate languages and they got embarrassed in front of the class and they, got, they had terrible pronunciation and they you know, made stupid mistakes and they were made fun of at school, and if it happened, like if it happened regularly, you know, in the course of the years, then what attitude do you think they might have in the future and how likely they are to succeed in the future? Well, I think they have, they have to have a lot of like mental effort to overcome these feelings, to overcome those anxiety and fears. That's true. That's true because they didn't want it and they were forced to do it. The same goes with like driving. I was forced, I know I talked about it in my, one of my previous videos, I, I was forced to get driver's license and it's good. I have it now, but I have a very negative attitude towards driving. You know, I have anxiety about driving. I think about like terrible accidents all the time when I drive because I had very negative experience with driving. And these like psychological factors are one of the most important schools. So uh, I think that uh, personalized and customized customized education might help. But yeah, it's like expensive, it's difficult, it's it's impossible here. So you have to get you have to take action by yourself. Nobody gonna give you that unless you take action. You know, you start doing stuff for yourself. And we should be thankful, honestly. Yeah, uh, we, we we don't need to forget that. I mean, we mustn't forget. Yeah, mustn't forget that. We should be thankful for school. Um, you now, compared to nothing, it's a big step. It's a huge advantage compared to nothing. Okay, you can imagine. You can look some look some countries that didn't have education. When children that you know, aren't educated, and there are big problems there. You know, they can work. They can get. They can get a job. They're poor. They you know, are not used to studying. Um, there are a lot of social problems. Yeah, we should be thankful.
No, don't forget this. And don't undermine undermine the the meaning, the power of education. Even in this even in this way. Even in this shape or form that we have. But you know, I always want something more. I want always want something better. Something above the average, something above the mediocre. So this is the mediocre level, and it's okay, it's better than nothing, it's okay. But if you want something better, if you want to be successful, if you, if you want to like acquire the the studying, the learning habits, the learning skills, it's very important to change something. You now many people after school they hate studying, they hate learning, and when they get when they get to work, um, they just go, they just go by the floor. No, go by the floor. They get their job, they're happy. You now maybe they get a promotion after some time. They, they, they learn around, and they see it. They, they are not happy to learn. They would like to learn, but they're not happy with it because they have these negative feelings, they have anxiety. You now the only thought of studying something, learning something, you know, reading books, writing something, textbooks, you know, terrifies them. And I don't know what I would do if I were a minister of education. What I would do, I would come up with something. I would, first of all, you need to increase salaries. Yeah, you need to increase salaries. Teacher, teachers here get like miserable salaries. Like it's, it's miserable. Yeah, let, let, let's face it. For that money, you know, I wouldn't teach you know, a week. I wouldn't teach you a week with that kind of money. I mean, whole, I mean, whole day. I mean, yeah, that whole shit. What's the word? And it's super little. Like 15, 20, 25,000. I don't know. What kind of salary is that? Yeah. You can expect that somebody is going to teach your kids, you know, in a interactive ways, in a technological ways, using technology, you know, using games and creative practice. No, they will. They just give you a textbook, they get you, you know, read and learn, and they make you be quiet. Never, never come forward. Never come forward. Never get initiative. Never take initiative. So that's what they want from you. So that you, you'd be quiet. That you'd be quiet, and you wouldn't cause any problems to them. You wouldn't cause any problems. Well, so I think the key here is personalized education, and in some countries I think it works pretty well like kids from the young age they can choose the subjects they like because we know that people like different stuff people are different people have different abilities and they have different passions in life they maybe they might not know right now what their passions are but 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 they they, they feel that they like some things in particular and they hate some other things and you can't force every single kid do the same things for 10 years and you know and expect that they do great. It's just impossible. So at least at least allow them to study badly. Like if the person doesn't like study, if the person doesn't like history, then let him, I don't know, get their grades. Just know. He doesn't or they don't, they don't study okay they don't have they don't get any notes but at least don't destroy these no don't don't destroy their feelings their attitude their passions don't destroy it no don't destroy it don't touch it yeah and you know what some some you know that's one of the reasons when some bad students they become successful later in life because I think later on they they learn a lot. They learn ways. Okay, they learn their own ways. They learn their own information. They have their own people. But 
they learn, they learn, they educate themselves, you know, one way or another. They become better. But you know, good students, they're like, uh, they burn out, they overwhelm, like, uh, 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 like they can't think, they, they're not imagine, imaginative, they can't create stuff, they need just the instructions. The instructions and they need to follow those instructions. Careful. That's it. And probably that's good for again for 90% of the maybe 70% of the people. I think that around 70% people they are they are like workers that should follow the instructions. And it's good. Don't say it's bad. Probably the system works for such kind of people. And it's adjusted for people that the country needs mostly, like workers. Workers that follow commands and they don't think twice, you know, when they ask something to do, they do it immediately, they don't ask stupid questions, they don't say, okay, you know what, this is a bad decision, I think we should go, we should do it another way, we should go another way. They just, they never raise a question, you know, they never, they never raise, never raise an eyebrow, eyebrow. Okay, guys, I got home. So this was the first part. Maybe I keep talking about this. Um, yeah, education. I'm an educator too. So I like this topic. If you have any ideas, please comment them below. Write them below. Comment sections.